Good morning and uh, welcome back. So, we are going to continue the results. So, last class we are discussing the general second order equation uh, this L u equal to f with, uh, with uh, without even the assumption of a naught is non negative and then you have small a a u v is this form what you have written here. And uh, as I said a need not be elliptic and uh, we are going to state a general theorem where we will be applying the Friedhoff alternative. Okay. So, uh, we have to understand the homogeneous equation. So, that is what uh, we are going to study. When f equal to 0 that is the okay, the set of so let me give us some number here. So, maybe this I will call it 1. So, this weak formulation I will call it to 2 always the strong form is 1 weak form is 1. When f equal to 0 the set of solutions of set of solutions of 2 form a that is what we want to see form a finite dimensional subspace of finite dimensional subspace of h 1 naught you see you call it say of dimension d dimension ok d ok 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 moreover there exists a finite dimensional subspace which is nothing but the solutions of the uh, adjoint equation some uh, dimensional subspace f of h 1 naught of omega of dimension d such that 2 as a solution Two has a solution two has a solution uh, for a given f in L two of omega if and only if f is in the orthogonal the perp of f f perp f perp ok the orthogonal of f perp. So, note that we do not assume a naught greater than or equal to 0. So, let me try to give a proof of this. Okay. So, I want to give a proof probably in so mark it here. So, I want to give a proof. So, the first step is that uh, the first claim I had a large uh, zero order term claim there exists lambda positive there exists lambda positive such that a u v plus lambda integral of u v is h 1 not elliptic you see a u v need not be h 1 not elliptic by you can choose a lambda positive. So, you can put a very heavy uh, first order term to prove that this bilinear form your B u v equal to a u v plus lambda u v is h 1 naught elliptic. So, what do you do is that you know that a naught and a, a naught. Uh, so, the first step is the proof of this claim that is fine. So, choose lambda positive 
because this a naught are uh, c infinity function such that a naught of x plus a lambda you can add a large enough lambda. So, this is away from 0 a naught need not be but it is in L infinity. So, you can put a positive quantity bigger than that. So, this should be greater than or equal to some gamma positive this you can do that one. So, now so, uh, uh, the, uh, so how do you prove that one? So, then what is B u u? B u u is equal to a, uh, a u u plus lambda integral of u square. So, this can be now estimated. So, you recall this estimate. So, what is this a u u? Integral of a i j. So, let me not write all the time d u by d x j d u by d x i plus a i d u by d x i and d u by d x i uh, u plus a naught plus lambda I put it together a naught lambda integral of u square. You see. So, by ellipticity this you can write it as alpha into grade u square you get that one. Here this is a, a, a is a bounded quantity. So, what you can do is that this can be estimated the modulus of that can be estimated some beta into grade u into u you see you can do that you can estimate. So, I can put a negative of that one from so this can be estimated by that one. So, this can be estimated that one and this is greater than or equal to gamma. So, this is greater than or equal to gamma. So, that gives you minus beta grade u in norm u plus gamma norm u square. So, you have this. Now, I want to square this in the sense that you have alpha minus let me do properly. So, you have your alpha into grade u alpha grade u square grade u square and plus I may make a squaring thing root u norm of u minus beta by 2 root gamma norm of grade u square and then you will get a positive uh, quantity that has to be removed beta square by 4 gamma into sorry this is uh, 2 is not there the 2 will be here and the, this uh, takes care of the second and third term and then you have to remove that term no more grade u square ok. So, so with that this is a positive quantity. So, you see this is a positive quantity. So, this is greater than or equal to 0. Now, that will be greater than or equal to alpha minus beta square by 4 gamma into norm of grade u square. This is what you want to do it. Now, look at ga gamma. Gamma is choice from here. So, I can make if lambda much bigger so that you can choose gamma large enough. So, choose large enough so that gamma is large enough large, such that 
alpha minus beta square by 4 gamma because gamma is log this can be make small. So, this can be greater than 0. So, that implies your B u u is greater than or equal to some constant alpha bar into norm grade u square. Now, apply Poincare inequality to get it some other alpha may be tilde into norm of u at h 1 naught omega square. Okay. So, that gives you, so that implies, so you have a weak formulation that implies, okay. so, so this is there. So, apply lax milligram there exists a uh, unique u not about the solution to our problem there exists uh, omega such that a u v plus lambda integral of u v equal to integral of f v for all v in h 1 naught. So, that you have it. So, how do we proceed for that? So, you we have a solution operator. So, let us go to a solution operator. Solution operator. So, what is the solution operator? You have f in L 2 of omega. Okay. That gives you a solution h 1 naught and we call this is the mapping g. So, g is a, what is g? g f is equal to u solution of the previous uh, solution of a g f that is uh, your solution a g f v plus lambda integral of g f v equal to integral of f v. So, that is what you get it a solution operator. Now, h 1 naught. So, you have a mapping g which is from L 2 to h 1 naught continuous at this stage and this is compactly contained in L 2 of omega. So, you can view your g from this is compact. So, you can view the solution operator not just from L 2 to h 1 naught, but you can view that operators from L 2 to L 2 in that case you which is compact. So, this is where you are using the first time you are seeing the, uh, the compact embedding you do that way. Now, uh, so this let me call it uh, star I do not know what number I can given. So, you have a thing. So, now look at it if if look at this observe this now observe, this is the important observation immediately u is a solution of this is what if u is a solution of a u v equal to f e this is what you are looking at it right if and only if take this term to the right side u then equal to g of f plus lambda u and implicit operator form. So, if you take this to here right side if you take this right this will be f plus lambda g f. Okay. So, that is g f is uh, the, so if u is a solution to this one if and only if this satisfies this is what you get it. Okay. So, put now v is equal to. So, I am just putting in the form which I want the com operator uh, form f plus lambda u. Then your star double star. So, star is uh, not star is equal to double star this one. Okay. So, this is our solution this okay. f plus lambda v that will imply your v minus lambda g v equal to f or in a typical form 
you want it uh, 1 over lambda v minus g v equal to 1 over lambda f that is ok does not matter what you get this is a typical form of this one if you recall ok t x minus lambda x where g is a compact operator so, that is it. So, that uh, immediately proves uh, so this implies uh, so if if lambda are now two cases cases if lambda because lambda coming here if lambda should come here ok if lambda inverse is not an Eigen value uh, value of g then that implies uh, there exists a unique solution this is the case d equal to 0 that means uh, you have a solution for every thing d, this is the case where you get d equal to 0 ok. If lambda inverse is an Eigen value Eigen value then it is the uh, then the result the result follows by follows by for the alternative for the alternative what does that mean what does uh, that means that uh, uh, the uh, it has lambda inverse has finite multiplicity finite uh, has finite multiplicity that is what it is proves ok. Uh, in other words uh, uh, ok the correspond and the finite dimensional space stated in this theorem is precisely that finite dimension. So, the homogeneous equation has thing and uh, the thing and uh, solution uh, uh, and equivalently solution this is the homogeneous equation. So, the finite multiplicity is the solution of some uh, the adjoint equation corresponding to that one. Now, the solution for f in L 2 of omega exists if and only if. So, there exists finite dimensional uh, finite dimensional space ok that also gives you a finite dimensional space if and only if f is in that kernel kernel of uh, i minus lambda g star perp which has the same dimension that you know which has the same dimension. So, that is a uh, very good application of your Fredholm alternate. So, I just want to make a, a some remark it is not really remark the uh, result I do not remember whose result it is, but uh, probably you can see the Gilberg and Trudinger. Trudinger or probably may be there also in the new book of Brazis functional analysis of low spaces and PDA. He says that uh, uh, so as I say that if you can show that d equal to 0 then there is a unique solution that is a th thing. So, using maximum principle even in this general case if a naught is greater than or equal to 0 one can show that uh, d equal to 0. That means, you do not need conditions on a i can show that uh, d equal to 0 do not need do not require 
this is what I said uh, the zeroth order terms is the one which creates trouble do not require any other condition any because of course you need a to be smooth and the L infinity functions uh, and other condition but you do not need any sign condition do not require any other condition on AI ok. So, you can uh, oh, so, so the next step is so we what we have discussed uh, about the value uh, about the uh, equations uh, P D E elliptic equations uh, with the Dirichlet boundary conditions. Now, let us go, go to Neumann condition. So, let us uh, with the Neumann condition I will do it for the Laplacian of course, you can also work out uh, with the general equation general L naught equation ok Neumann condition. So, let me do uh, 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 some results with the Neumann. So, look at this equation. So, let me a uh, case easy case. That is a slightly difficult case when you do not have the zero third term ok. So, you consider this equation f in L omega and d u by d nu equal to 0 on d omega ok. So, this is a simple exercise. So, this is your first equation you have this exercise is slightly may be more how to derive it. So, I may skip uh, tell few things how to get back which uh, one is a weak solution exercise uh, uh, get a weak formulation get the weak formulation. Now, you cannot work with h 1 naught of omega because u is not no longer 0. So, you are looking for d u by d nu uh, equal to 0. So, to work with uh, you have to work weak formulation. So, that is the first step you understand weak formulation uh, u in h 1 of omega uh, with uh, grade u integral of grade u grade v plus u v. The idea of adding uh, if you do not add the zero order term uh, there are troubles ok. And so, and this also Poincare inequality is not true in h 1 of my space for all v in h 1 this you can immediately get it that is not a problem. Going back is little more issues which you have to understand, but you uh, uh, fill up the steps which I am doing it here ok. All right. So, uh, and what is the proof existence uniqueness ok. So, maybe I will illustrate the exercise is uh, use lax milligram lemma use lax milligram to prove well postness. I write well postness means well postness means existence uniqueness and the estimate uh, and uh, this estimate you have to prove h 1 is less than or equal to constant norm u. But this is more easy in the sense that there is no Poincare inequality, but and you do not require Poincare inequality because of that. So, it is exactly the norm. So, which you are proving that one. So, how do you go back? So, assume 2 that is what you want to show right. Assume 2 and take u is in and take u in h 2 of omega. Once you uh, do h 2 of omega you can do an integration by parts here integration by parts because u is in h 2 implies Laplace n of u is in l 2 already integration by parts or you take uh, u is in c 2 of omega bar you can take that also to start with. So, integration by parts when you are doing an integration by parts you get minus Laplace n of u v this is in omega and then you will have a term here integral of d omega 
d u by d nu v over d sigma plus integral over u v equal to integral of f. So, you see this is what you will get it because the boundary term is not gone yet there. and this is true for all v in h 1 of omega. Okay. Since, it is true for all v in s 1 omega the above equality above equality is true for all v in d omega which we have done earlier also. That is once you have for all v in uh, 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 so you see when you take a v in d omega this term will disappear. That means you get that. So, that is integral of you get minus Laplace n of u plus u minus f v over omega only now not for all v in h 1 of omega this for all v in. So, these are the small subtleties when you work with uh, uh, weak formulation. So, to be very careful with the subtleties. Okay. Now, this is true for uh, earlier you got it with h 1 naught, but then the boundary condition gives only when you take v in d omega. So, this is in the sense of that implies minus Laplace n of u plus u equal to f in distribution that is the meaning of a distribution and that is first step you want it. And since u is in you get something more now since v is in uh, d omega you see this is the way you have to for a thing and over there, which is dense in this d omega is dense in L 2 of omega. Okay. Once this is L 2 of omega you get this minus Laplace n of u plus u minus f equal to 0 in L in the sense of L 2 of omega the meaning of that you have this minus Laplace n of u plus u minus f equal to 0 uh, for all v in for all v in L 2 of omega. In particular for all v in H 1 of omega you see the way you derive. Of course, so this implies in L 2 of omega. So, uh, I will come back to that one this also implies minus Laplace n of u plus u equal to f almost everywhere. If you further if u is in C 2 of omega bar implies minus Laplace n of u plus u of course, you need f is also in C omega c 2 of omega c omega implies point wise that means u is classical you got that one. What about the boundary condition? So, this way you can do little more exercise from here since now you got these things for v in h 1 of omega this will imply you integral d u by d nu you do an integration by parts at this stage from this integration by parts you get v equal to over boundary of omega equal to 0 for all v in h 1 of omega. Okay. And that is the meaning when v is in h 1 of omega so, one way to think that v is in h half of omega. So, that uh, u is in h 1 of omega that is a solution you have obtained. So, you can interpret the u by d nu which uh, in the thing you can interpret it as an h minus half of omega.
d omega you see and this is precisely you can interpret it as the duality between if v is in l2 and you have uh, u is in h2 you will get it as h half in that case you get l2 so depending on further regularity you can get more so this is basically h half so this will be h minus half that equal to 0 that means du by d nu in the general k is uh, equal to 0 uh, on gamma wherever it is so you can interpret that way so you can try all these things here so i more or less stop here so what i am going to do in the next class we consider this equation without the first order term okay we will do the case with the minus laplace n of u equal to f in omega and du by d nu equal to 0 on d omega you see immediately you can observe u equal to constant if u is a solution u plus c is a solution so solution is not unique you can also see that there does not so there is no existence and uniqueness immediately unless you put additional conditions okay which we will discuss in the next class thank you thank you very much